Hello everyone, welcome to OneSite TV. My name's Chris. In today's video, I'm going to take you through the process of installing Niagara 4.9 onto a headless Linux machine. I hope you enjoy. Right, let's get started. First thing I'll say is to make sure you or the person doing this is comfortable in a Linux environment. If not, then I suggest sticking with Windows. You need to have in front of you a clean install of Red Hat or CentOS 8.1 or newer. If using the 7.x releases, then 7.7 .7 is the oldest supported version. The machine should be on a network and accessible via SSH. Internet access will definitely make your life easier. As long as you've satisfied those, we're good to go. So let's open an SSH session to our machine and enter the user password. First thing to do is make sure we have some prerequisites installed. The first one will be a wget. This is because we'll be downloading the installer from our website via HTTP. The command is sudo yum install wget. Enter the user password again. And yes. And that's installed. Next will be unzip to extract the installer. sudo yum install unzip. And yes again. Next is our sync, a required component by the installer. sudo yum install our sync and finally dos to unix which is another required component by the installer sudo yum install dos to unix Okay, that looks good. Now those are sorted, we need to make sure we have a text editor installed. My favorite is Nano, but there are others available. So it's sudo yum install nano and accept yes. That's downloading and installed. So now we're good to download the installer via wget. Okay, we'll let that download and come back when that's complete. Okay, now we have that downloaded, we will run through the install process. Uh, run an ls command. That will show us the um, downloaded zip file in our directory. Um, there we're going to extract it using um, the unzip command. That will extract the contents um, to our working directory. Uh, then once that's complete, we can run an ls command again and view those extracted files. Okay, that's successfully extracted. So ls and we should see our install files and that's good. Um, what we're gonna wanna do next is we are going to want to view the readme file. Okay, just a few things to note in the readme file. The installer will create a system user called Niagara and also states that we will need to read the install file before going any further. So let's view the install file and so I can get a screen print there. Here we can see that we will need to run the command um, install.sh um, to continue with the install. Let's go. Enter the password for the user. Before we continue, do uh, we need to read through the license agreement? So let's hit enter for that. And um, for all intents and purposes of the video, we're just going to skip through this bit and accept it. 
At this point, we're going to want to create a um, system passphrase. This is the same as you do if you were installing um, N4 onto a Windows machine. You create a um, system passphrase to protect the stations. Uh, we will do that now. And confirm it. And make note of that. At this point, it's going to want to create an absolute path to the directory where we want to install N4. We're going to stick with the default uh, suggested uh, path in this instance. It doesn't exist, so the system's going to create it. The default answer, yes, for that. Would you like to configure which users can use N4? Yes, we do. Uh, at this point, we're going to want to add our users um, just to point out that the users here will be um, users that will be used to access the platform, not the station. Um, this is the same as um, an installation on Windows where you would use the Windows user to access the platform once that's um, up and running. So for this example, I'm going to use the current user, which is myself, um, Chris. Click enter. Users accepted. So we're going to add another. Um, we have a root user on this install. So we're going to add the root user. And we don't want to add any more. So no. Should the installer make the necessary modifications? So we're going to go yes. Do you want to install a GNOME desktop shortcuts for the configured users? Um, this is a headless install. Um, we're not going to be using any graphical user interfaces. So for this scenario, it's no. And no again. Do you want N4 to be used as an installation tool? Yes. And once we have completed that, we need to verify the settings. We're happy with those, so we're going to continue with the installation. And at this point, that's going to work through the install process. And once that's complete, we can take the next steps. Now we have a few post installation steps to carry out. Luckily, the Niagara install log file details what we need to do. First, we need to source the Niagara script so we can launch the runtime from the terminal. This is achieved by running this command on the terminal. Next, it should also be added to the bash profile execution scripts as follows. Uh, on the last line. And next, we add that to the bash RC profile. RC. Scroll to the last line and paste. Save it. Yes. Okay, next step, we will need to open a few ports by copying a few commands. These are your list of commands that we will need to copy in. Just missing an S there off sudo. Let's catch that before that becomes a problem. Okay, that's the first command, a success. We could also just copy it off of here. I've been using a um, a text editor just as a template. Sometimes it depends on your personal preferences. You may want to copy off as you go. I prefer using a notepad as it helps to keep track of everything beforehand. So 
So that's sudo. That's the next command complete. And one final one for this set. And this last firewall rule is a simple port forward from 443 to 8443. Since, Linux, uh, since in Linux, the first 1000 ports are reserved for use by specific applications, our Niagara station will be unable to bind to 443. We can instead set our station HTTPS port to 8443 and use the firewall to forward incoming connections on 443 to do it. To do this, uh, we just need to copy in another command, um, which is on my clipboard here. Paste. And that's successful. We will now need to perform a reload. Let's uh, come back successful. There is also a, um, a warning in uh, the install screen print here that could not find the libx screen saver package. Um, in this instance, this is um, a headless box. There's no graphical user interface, so we can just ignore that. So that's with, um, to make the permissions take effect, we need to log out and log back in. And we we'll then log back in. So we need to open a SSH connection again into the password for the user. Okay, now that's complete, we can check the status of the Niagara daemon. Uh, we need to do this with the following command. It's sudo Niagara. dctl status into the password and here we can see that the Niagara daemon is currently not running and um, we can start that with a similar command which is uh, sudo sudo Niagara dctl start And that's starting the Niagara Demon. Okay, so now we're gonna open the workbench from another machine and see if we connect to the platform. Okay, so here we are on our remote machine. We've got workbench open. What we'll do now is we'll go and open a connection to our platform. So let's enter the IP address for the Linux machine. Then we will enter the credentials for our user we created earlier. Now that we're connected to the platform, we'll go to the license manager. Here we will grab the host ID, this LNX number here, and send that to our Trillium partner for a license. Once we've received that license, we can either import the license automatically from the licensing servers, or we can bring those files in manually. Um, that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching, and uh, please like and subscribe.